Welcome to September's Leco Challenge. This problem is called Erect the Fence. You are given an array of trees where trees I equals X and Y, representing the location of a tree in the garden. These are the X, Y points. You are asked to fence the entire garden using the minimum length of rope as it is expensive. The garden is well fenced only if all the trees are enclosed. Return the coordinates of the trees that are exactly located on the fence perimeter. So if we had all these trees here, our rope is going to enclose like this. And we want to return these five trees that are going to be on the border of the fence. So this problem is a very difficult one and one I don't fully understand, but I'll do my best. Let's go to the whiteboard and see how we can visualize this. So let's imagine a couple trees here on a X, Y axis. And I'm going to make sort of a diamond shape. And you can imagine this would be the Y axis and this would be the X axis, right? <clears throat> so at first glance, this problem seems pretty simple. Why don't we just move along the X axis here and keep track of the minimum and maximum points on the Y axis. If we did that, we would enclose all the trees and seemingly minimize the amount of rope that we'd have to use, right? So that seemed pretty easy, but unfortunately this is not the right answer. The reason for that is it's actually less rope to use right here. If we just use this rope, this would these two ropes would actually be greater than this rope. So we can't do that. We want to make sure we minimize the amount of rope while still enclosing all of the trees. This is known as the convex hull in math and essentially you can see that we're <clears throat> wrapping all the outside points like, like so. So how can we do this? Let, let's go straight to the algorithm. This is going to be known as something called the gram scan. <clears throat> essentially what happens is we start at the lowest point and we need to sort all our points in some fashion. Uh, normally what you want to do is sort it in the order of the angle from the minimum point but that's a little bit difficult so let's just say that we sorted on the x and y axis so it's going to be sorted like here 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 all the way up okay now the way the gram scan works is we have to first take three points so we start off by taking these three points here and notice how at this point this is running clockwise, right? Oh, I'm sorry, counterclockwise. When we check uh, the next point that we want to try adding, which would be this one, we want to see if this angle continues to be counterclockwise. We can see that it's not, right? At this point, the angle turns clockwise here. So when that happens, what we'll do is actually pop off the one from before. And we'll continue until we, we find that the angle is finally clockwise. At this point, we see that er, counterclockwise, I mean. At this point, it's clockwise, counterclockwise, right? Now, when it's, when it's uh, collinear, we just keep it. And then we go here. But again, we see that this angle is clockwise. So we pop this guy off. And at this point, we'll actually, actually see that's also counterclockwise. So we pop that off. And it gets to here. And we continue this algorithm all the way around. Now, remember how I said I've sorted it by the X and Y axis instead? So what that would mean is it's only going to go up to here where it ends. So that's going to be the bottom half. We can do the same algorithm at the same time going for the top order. But for that, we're going to try to make sure that the angle stays clockwise. For the underneath, we want to make sure the angles continue to be counterclockwise. So the key then is how do we calculate whether it's running clockwise or counterclockwise. Now this is where it gets a little bit difficult for me, but just Im imagine if we had three points like this. What we can do is take the two vectors here. So imagine this is point A, this is point B, and point C. We can calculate the cross product of these two vectors. And what that, that's going to give us is the uh, z-axis. And essentially, if it's a negative, that means it's running clockwise. If it's positive, that means it's running counterclockwise. Now, the equation to that, I believe, 
was, let me see if I got this right here, C y minus b y over b i'm sorry not over b x Oy. should be c y minus b y multiplied by i want to say b of x minus a of x subtracted by B of y minus a of y times c of x minus b of x. And essentially, this equation right here, uh, if it's less than zero, that means it's running clockwise. And I hope that I got that right. Um, I may be wrong about that. No, that looks right. Okay, so I don't want to get too into the details of why this is because I don't fully understand it. But this is going to be our key equation that we use to see if we want to pop off the points from before or not. So knowing that equation, let's try to use that to um, solve this problem. Okay. All right, so what I'm going to do is write a function that's going to take three points. And we'll call this clockwise. It's going to take three points. And they have to be in order. Now, the first thing I want to do, actually, is uh, break this up. So just make our equation a little bit easier. And we're going to take our x and y points from, from all three points given to us. So the equation that we want to return is going to be, all right, let's see, y3 minus y2 times x2 minus x1 uh, subtracted by y2 minus y1 multiplied by x3 minus x2. And remember that if this value is less than zero, that means it's running clockwise. So um, remember, we have to sort all our points because there's nothing to tell us that it's sorted right now. So we'll take our trees and we'll just sort it. And this is going to sort it by the x and y axis, right? All right, so we since we sorted it in this way, we're going to have to uh, do do our equation for both the upper bound and the lower bound um, of our of our shape. One of them is going to be storing all the points that hit the lower part of this convex hull, and one of them will hold the higher part of our convex hull. So there could be repeats, so we'll have to unify that uh, afterwards, but we'll get to that. All right, so for, let's see, T in trees, we're going to have a list of both the upper and lower And what we're going to do is have a while loop. We'll say while the length of upper is greater than one, so that means there's at least two in here, and we're going to use our clockwise function and pass in the the second to last point in our in our list the last point in our list, as well as our candidate. Now, this is gonna be for the upper. So for upper, we wanna make sure that it's running, or uh, we wanna make sure it's running clockwise, right? So if it's running counterclockwise, so it's greater than zero, then we wanna pop it off. And we have to do that up until this is not no longer the case. Now for the lower, It'd be the same thing, except we want to make sure that this function returns um, greater than zero, right? So upper negative two, or not upper, lower negative two, lower negative one, and t 
let's make sure our or um, for the lower we want it to be running counterclockwise so if it's clockwise pop that off finally once this is no longer the case let's append the T to both upper and lower now all we need to do at this point once our algorithm is over is combine our upper and lower points. And remember, there could be repeats, repeats here. So we'll make this into a set, and then we'll reconvert it into a list. But unfortunately, these points in here are our list too, right? And those aren't hashable. Uh, so what we'll have to do actually is to convert these into a tuple, but everything else should remain the same. Should be no problem. Okay, so let's make sure, that, make sure this works here. And it looks like that's working. Let's go ahead and submit it. And accepted. All right, so this algorithm is known as the Gram Scan. And there is another version called the Jarvis, which is very similar, but um, it's a little bit less efficient. So I'm, I just didn't, I just decided not to go over it. Um, it's a hard one. I don't see how realistically anyone could solve this in an interview unless it was specifically for like a, a mapping software or or maybe some you know visual <laughs> some sort of like visual mapping uh, role uh, so uh, I wish I understood this a little bit better and was able to explain it I'm, I am going to put a link in the description that I think explain uh, explains this concept very well and helped me understand this problem but you know, if you weren't able to solve it, I don't think you're you're alone. This is a very hard one, and even now, I I'm having trouble understanding it, especially why this cross product actually gives us the angle. I'm having trouble figuring that out. So, all right, uh, time complexity wise, it's going to be n log n from this sort mostly, and time complexity should be O of n, and that's it. All right, thanks for watching my channel, and remember, do not trust me. I know nothing.